Welcome to Commodore Countdown. I'm Alexa Galloway here with David Lauterbach. The Falmouth Commodores are facing the Orleans Firebirds here at Gulf Fuller Field. However, earlier today, the All-Star selection was announced for the Cape Cod League All-Star Game. Now, David, what was your first reaction when you saw the list? Why are there only eight Commodores? Originally, it said that Steven Duggar did not make the team, the right fielder from Clemson, but he did in the end. It was just a misprint and a mishandling of the paperwork. So he is going to be on the All-Star roster for the Western Division. I'm really happy for him. Overall, Falmouth, nine players they have. Jake Matson, Kevin Newman, and Connor Hale starting. Those are the three starters down from six last year, which was a Cape League high in 2013. Then in the reserve side, they have, let's see if I can get all these names, Matt Eckelman, Matt Hall, Alex Young, Stephen Duggar, Cameron O'Brien, and Matt Uresti. So good, there's the other job. six. Very oh, thank you, job. thank you. So I'm pretty proud of this team. I think they did a great job. They covered all the bases. A lot of guys who made it, it there was no real surprises between the guys who made it for me. I thought they were all very qualified. And for the second year in a row, Falmouth leads with the most all-stars. This year, nine. Last year, seven. Now across the board for each team, were there any surprises you saw besides Falmouth? Well, there's a couple players. Uh, Orleans has a guy named Edwin Rios, who I don't believe made the team. I thought he's very deserving. Another guy who I'm surprised they make is Trace Barrera and then John Norwood, two players for Katuit. Norwood being an outfielder, he'll hit in the home run derby alongside Barrera, ironically. So they're both in the home run hitting contest, but neither are in the game. I was surprised just to see, especially those two, because Norwood's a very good player. He might even get signed in the next couple weeks. I wouldn't be surprised. A rising senior over at Vandy. And then Trace Barrera is just an incredible catcher from Texas. So I was really surprised about them. There's a couple other ones here and there uh, across the league. A couple of her at Bourne. Someone like uh, Ryan Kellogg, the pitcher from Arizona State. I was surprised he didn't make the squad, but overall, I think they got it right with this year's team. Well, looking forward to tonight's game. Falmouth's starting pitcher is Ryan Mosley from Texas Tech University. He's 1-1 one one with 14 strikeouts and 15 in the third innings pitch. David, he had a shaky start against Brewster. How is he going to bounce back? Well, it's going to be tough, and it'll be very funny to see how see him have a dominant performance tonight only because he's going from struggling against the worst team in the East and Brewster they're still in the cellar out in the division standings to going to the best team arguably in the Cape League right now the Firebirds are just on fire to say the least. They're a very good lineup from top to bottom. So Mosley just needs to have better command this time. He struggled a little bit with his curve and fastball last time out. If he can hit the strike zone a little bit more today, maybe rack up some more Ks, get outs when he needs to, I think he'll have a lot more success tonight. We heard the Falmouth side. I spoke with Orleans broadcaster David Fine to hear the Orleans side pitching tonight. David Fine. Now, David, Orleans starting pitcher tonight is Colt Mahoney. He has a 173 ERA. What's he going to do tonight? From Colton Mahoney, Alexa, you're going to see a lot of strikeouts. Mahoney's the type of guy that he really can overpower you with his fastball. He'll set you up with the fastball, and just like they used to do back with Ab Abner Doubleday, he'll throw a curve in there, and all of a sudden you're striking out. He had 11 strikeouts earlier this year, a season high against YD. That was about a month ago at this point. And then in four of his starts, he's had at least six strikeouts. He is a strikeout pitcher and it should be fun to just watch him pitch because he's so composed on the mound too and he you know, relishes the strikeout opportunities. Now, how is he going to match up against Commodore pitcher Ryan Mosley? Well, Mosley, it's interesting because he has such a higher ERA than Colton. Colton, the 173, and Mosley, the 816, though in a, some, uh, two fewer appearances. But for Mosley, it's deceiving. The you, you see an 816 ERA, you're saying this guy's not doing very good. Caught the short end of the stick, some ERA inflated appearances, possibly. And so it's really an even matchup, as it is with most guys on the Cape. Still college guys, still developing their stuff. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. We heard from the Orleans side. The pitching is going to be phenomenal tonight, but what else does Falmouth need to have to get the win? First off, congrats on talking to two Davids in one pregame show. I think that must be a record. But anyway, back to this one. Falmouth needs to do well from top to bottom. They did that last night in a 5-3 victory over the Gateman at Spillane Field in Wareham. Two days ago, they lost to Katuit 4-2 at Lowell Park. Part of the reason why, five hitters in Falmouth's lineups went over. None of them had a hit. None of them reached base. Last night, every hitter that went to the plate that included the pinch hitter Cameron O'Brien reached base. And if they want to beat Orleans tonight, they have to do that. They need to have consistency from top to bottom. You know they have it in the top part of that lineup where they usually have the trio of Uresti, Duggar, and Newman. Uresti's been on a tear 9 for 12 in his last two games. So if they can keep that trio doing well and then have the next two trios of 4 through 6 and 7 through 9 do well, they should be able to bounce back and beat Orleans this time out. Of course, it was a 6-2 loss to the Firebirds last time here. So Falmouth, they were inconsistent in that one. If they're consistent tonight, they might flip the score against hey, Orleans. Now you mentioned the offense. What does the defense mm -hmm. need to do? They just need a, <laughs> as silly as this sounds, not make errors. That last start in Brewster for Mosley, Brewster had eight errors, and that's part of the reason why Falmouth won this 15-11 football game over at Stony Brook. So Falmouth needs to just keep the ball, keep the composure, and not have too many errors. Last year they had a couple errors that led to the Gateman scoring a couple unearned runs. I believe just one out of the three were earned. 
And Alex Young was dominant over six innings, gave up one run. It was unearned due to a pair of errors up the middle of the infield by Uresti and Newman. So if they can switch that, not make those errors, keep all the runs to being earned, hopefully there's none tonight, Thomas should be able to walk away with this one. We'll see how it all works out tonight. Game time set for 4.30, audio pregame at 4.15 on Ustream, so stick around and join us.